So LG got in touch and said, we want to sponsor a video and send you our WQHD 100Hz ultra wide screen monitor and it's your job to turn it into a ginormous echo show. And I was like, you think I can't do that? Me, you think I can't do that? I probably can't do that. Cue the A-Team style music that is not the A-Team music because I couldn't afford the copyright. In the year 2020, a crackpot idiot started a YouTube career, promptly sellotaped an Echo Dot to his monitor. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, then maybe you can hire this utter buffoon. That would be cheating. And toss. Cheating and toss. And so I decided I needed something to actually connect into the monitor and make this happen. So I tried first of all my Motorola phone because that has she that should not be named baked into it. And this seemed like a good idea at first because this monitor has a USB type C port on it that outputs 60 watts of power. That's enough for a laptop, let alone my mobile phone. That looked worse than sellotaping an Echo Dot to the monitor, so that didn't work. And so I thought I'd try the Nvidia Shield, I thought maybe I can control that with the Echo Dot, but that didn't have the right aspect ratio, and it meant having to speak to the Echo Dot, so I thought, okay, I shall try a Fire Stick. Again, same problem with the aspect ratio, and I had to speak to the remote like I was some kind of peasant. So that idea was out the window too. He's gonna use his PC! Oi! He's gonna use his PC! It's so obvious! No. Well, yes, but check this out, because this is the hardest and the coolest thing I have ever done on this channel. Welcome to my giant Echo Show demonstration, and I think to keep things interesting, I'm going to edit in a reaction every time something cool happens, in the style of an 18-year-old social media influencer. Oh, sick! So, to start off with, I'm going to show you the basic She That Should Not Be Named functionality, and anybody can do this bit. This bit is easy. Okay. Turn the moon lamp off. Okay. Dead, dead easy. Um, that is just an app running in Windows that reacts to your microphone and does the whole usual she that should not be named thing. But, this is where it gets clever. Okay. Netflix. Okay. It's loading the Netflix app! Oh! Not only is it loading the Netflix app, it's now going to run a macro which scrolls down and clicks on the most recently watched episode so that I don't have to. It's now playing high school on Netflix, that's the last thing I was watching. And I can now pause playback by saying... Okay. Pause playback. Okay. How cool is that? Bro, 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 that's so sick! And that is not easy. That was the biggest nightmare ever. Okay. Plex. Okay. That's now loading Plex. So this is just loading apps, and that is actually a lot harder than you might think. This was not easy to do at all. But now I can also scroll across and up and down and press select. Okay. Go right to. Okay. okay. Select. Okay. So I can actually use my voice to navigate through different menus in Windows, which is just unprecedented. I don't think anybody's ever done that before. Oh! Pause playback. Okay. Oh! Back. Okay. I can go back through the menus just by doing that, so I've got full control of navigation, and not just in this app. Oh! Steam. Okay. I was downloading Steam in big picture mode. This is something you couldn't do on an Echo Show, and that's why the title is what it is. Okay. Select. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. And you're thinking to yourself, I don't want to have to navigate like that every time. You don't have to. Okay. Streets of Rage. Okay. I can load that from anywhere, so it doesn't matter whereabouts I am in the menu system, if I say Streets of Rage, she loads Streets of Rage, and that's what's happening right now. Home. Okay. I've got the same thing set up for multiple different games, I've got it set up for Watch Dogs, and Streets of Rage, and NBA 2K20, which I never should have started playing. 
Um, and I've got it set up for other things that are actually useful to me in working life. So, Alexa. Premiere Pro. Okay. How good is that? Alexa. Photoshop. Okay. For music, you can just use Amazon Music the same way as you would with any ginormous Echo Show. Alexa. Play songs by Green Day. Shuffling songs by Green Day on Amazon Music. Which is great, but I'm not a big fan of Amazon Music, so... Alexa. Stop. I can load Spotify with just one word because this is a macro that I set up. Alexa. Spotify. Okay. And it immediately starts playing Nora Jones, because that's all I listen to now, because I've reached that age. So I came up with this fairly ingenious concept at the beginning of the week, and I thought, this is going to be so easy. And then about halfway through the week, I was like... And this isn't a tutorial by any stretch of the imagination. If it was, this video would go on for about 10 hours, because this was not easy. But I'm going to give you an overview of what I did, and if you have a certain level of competence, you should be able to go, okay, I get that, I get that, I get that, and you can do it too. In order to get this little idiot onto your PC, all you've got to do is visit the Microsoft App Store and search for She That Shall Not Be Named. Once you've searched for She That Shall Not Be Named, you can simply click on it and press the install button that pops up. Once you press the install button, that's it. You can use your PC's mic to control She That Shall Not Be Named. I think this might be literally the only way to get She That She Not Be Named to load up a movie on an ultra-wide screen 35-inch monitor. I can't think of any other way. He's got some software on his PC that's gonna run macro- He's got some software on his PC that's gonna run macro- Yes, I'm going to use macros. Shut up. Um, I have this bit of software on my PC called Event Ghost, and what Event Ghost does is it listens out for things happening on your PC and then carries out a thing. The thing it's listening out for is something that she that should not be named is triggering, and I'll tell you how we're triggering that in a moment. And what Event Ghost does is when it hears that trigger, it then carries out a macro, which is a sequence of commands, if you don't speak nerd. And that sequence of commands in our case is to either load up Netflix or Plex, depending on which one we asked for, and then play things in WQHD Ultra Widescreen. This is the only, only, only way of doing this, and I'm quite proud of that fact. Here's the really clever bit. How on earth do I get She That Should Not Be Named to trigger my PC to run those macros in the first place? With one of these. You weren't expecting that, were you? I was. If you were expecting that, you're some kind of genius. So basically what I've got is a little FLIRC infrared receiver plugged into the USB port on my computer. And this thing's original purpose was to listen out for any old remote control so that you could control Windows Media Center or Kodi or any other remote based software on your computer. And all I've done is I've said, well, forget all that stuff. I want Event Ghost to react instead. Event Ghost is listening out for the keyboard shortcuts that this thing produces, and in turn, it is triggering those macros. From there, it's actually really simple. I'm replacing this thing with this thing. This is a Broadlink Black Bean, and its job is to fire off infrared remote signals when you give she that should not be named commands. Its intended purpose is to literally control your TV, or turn on your set-top box, or do those sorts of things with your voice. All I'm doing is I'm creating routines for this thing that trigger off the buttons for this thing, so that when I say to she that should not be named, I want Netflix, it sends the button on the remote that I programmed up to control Netflix. Genius. For loading individual games and Steam, I'm using exactly the same method, but I have set Steam to automatically load into big picture mode to disguise the fact that I'm using big ugly Windows 10. And this is why I wanted to use Windows in the first place. I wanted to be able to ask she that should not be named to load up video games on a monitor capable of 100Hz refresh rate, black stabilizer, free sync, and adjustable response time. This monitor is out of this world for gaming. 
It's a curved screen which gives you this sense of depth that you just don't get with a flat panel monitor. It's 35 inches of glorious monetary goodness which is a full inch bigger than the majority of monitors on the market at this price range. It's got HDR10 and sRGB 99% which means that the colour reproduction is just insane. And it's got 100Hz refresh rate. Did I mention that yet? I might have mentioned that a few times. I have never had a monitor with a 100Hz refresh rate before, and the smoothness of everything is just awesome. On top of this, it's doing it all with just 45 watts of power. This is much better delivery than most of the stuff on the market. Loading up Netflix and Plex using Event Ghost was a nightmare because Microsoft have decided to start making these things called apps and burying them deep in folders and then making it so you can't load them as shortcuts without figuring out what their app IDs are. If you however want to just load up Premiere Pro or Photoshop or Excel, it's simply a case of saying here is the shortcut Event Ghost to that piece of software, load it up. And this is another reason that this monitor is absolutely perfect for this project. LG have given you software for your PC called on-screen control, which can actually monitor what application is on the screen at the time and change the monitor's presets in accordance with what it is you've got open. This is insane. I have never heard of a monitor doing this, but you can have it so that when you've got Photoshop on the screen, the monitor will automatically choose the presets that you've created for Photoshop. So you get all of your colors and your brightness and your contrast in accordance with that. If you then decide to open up Excel, you can have it switch to the reader preset, in which case you've got an easier on the eye preset for reading text. Mental. Spotify is using exactly the same method as the other things, it just launches when Event Ghost tells it to. But I have then created a macro that says once it's launched, press the spacebar for me so that music starts playing. This is ingenious, if I do say so myself, and it's the same thing that I've done with Netflix. I've created a macro that says once Netflix opens, tab about 17 times and then press the enter key so that it goes to the right place and starts playing whatever it was I was watching last. I bet there's a catch. Yes, all right, yes, there's a catch, you gimp, shut up. This is a remote control. It only has so many buttons on it, which means I can only program so many triggers for Event Ghost. This also means that I can't actually ask for things by name. I can't say load a particular title in Netflix or start a particular artist in Spotify because it's just a macro that's pressing a button and making a thing happen. I could load up specific titles in Plex or specific artists in Plex using Plex's official she that should not be named skill, but it's not working for me right now. I don't know why, I have reached out to Plex and I'm waiting for an answer. If you want a proper tutorial on Event Ghost, just let me know in the comments and I probably won't do it because most people will find it boring. But there is a video here from 2013 if you wanted to see me talking in slow motion. There's something wrong with me in that video. Uh, that will teach you all about what Event Ghost does, how to use it, the works. LG sponsored today's video to integrate their monitor into my usual content. They said, there is no obligation to tell you guys what my opinion of it is. It's great! I love this thing! I can't rant and rave enough about how much I love this monitor. This is one of the nicest things I have ever been sent. Not just for gaming, but also for my work. A 35 inch ultra widescreen monitor at 3440 by 1440 can easily replace a conventional dual monitor setup and has proven to be absolutely optimum for multitasking and has made my life so much easier when editing these videos. If you want to buy one, there are links in the description right now to where you can pick one up. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. That'll tell YouTube's algorithms it was a good video and more people should see it. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell. If you ding the bell, it lets YouTube know that you want to be notified when I upload videos. These amazing people here are my patrons from Patreon and they make these videos a possibility. Without them, I would not still be doing this because two day jobs is a nightmare. Uh, these are my social medias, my Facebooks, my Twitters and my Instagrams. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time. <laughs> That's terrible.
<laughs> oh god, there's gonna be so many comments from people going, I hate this guy, he's so annoying. Shut up. Shut up. No one cares what you think. He's gonna use macros. That's what I'm gonna do. There's gonna be a little man come on and go, he's gonna use macros. <laughs> That's how teenagers talk, isn't it? Sideways baseball cap. Does it every time. From there, I can just load up, say, Streets of Rage, like I did the, in the... <laughs> Do kids still say things as sick and fat? I don't know any other buzzwords.